So this woman, her name's Taylor, and Taylor is a pathological liar, and one of her lies is about to ruin her life forever. So Taylor has this boyfriend, who we'll just call Boyfriend. And Boyfriend, he's been with her a while, but he's kinda tired of all of her drama, and he's thinking about leaving her. And Taylor realizes this, and she goes to him and she's like, oh, but guess what? I'm pregnant. Of course, she's not pregnant, she's a liar. In fact, Taylor had had a hysterectomy years before, so it would be impossible for her to be pregnant. But Boyfriend doesn't know that. And he really isn't all that thrilled about the pregnancy, but he decides the right thing to do will be to stick it out with Taylor and help her raise this baby when it comes out. Cool, but now Taylor has a problem. She's not really pregnant, and she needs Boyfriend to believe she is. So she starts faking it. Not by just saying she's pregnant, she goes all out and puts 110% into this lie. She tells everyone on social media she's having a baby. She starts rushing into the bathroom every day, saying she has morning sickness. She makes doctor's appointments in front of Boyfriend. Sometimes she'll even take him with her to those appointments and she'll make him wait outside. Oh, but worse than that, she buys fake ultrasounds and she starts showing them to people like hey look here's my baby she even goes as far as to buy a fake baby bump from a website called and i'm not making this up fakeababy.com which is a website that will sell you everything you need to fake a pregnancy why does this exist? But anyway, Taylor keeps the lie going. She sets up a maternity photo shoot that she does with boyfriend. Here's a real photo from that shoot. I mean, look, he's got his hand on the bump and he still has no idea. She also has a whole ass gender reveal party. And poor boyfriend, he believes all of this because she has ultrasounds and other receipts. Like, why wouldn't he believe her? Until... Eventually, they get to the point where the baby is due. And of course, boyfriend is like, hey, where's the baby? And she's like, I'm going to the hospital to get induced. But the night before she's supposed to go to the hospital and get induced, she low-key sets a small fire in boyfriend's house while he's sleeping. And she does this hoping it will delay her hospital appointment. But luckily, he wakes up in time and is able to put it out. So that doesn't delay her appointment. Then, the next morning, on the day she's supposed to go to the hospital and get induced, she allegedly calls in a bomb threat to the hospital. And this does end up delaying the appointment. Now her appointment's delayed, but by this point, boyfriend has gotten suspicious. So he goes and confronts her, and they get into a huge fight. And he's like, are you even pregnant? And she's like, you just wait. I'll have the baby by the end of the week. So then, Taylor comes up with one of the wildest plans I've ever heard. And I know you're like, Ray, she's totally gonna steal a baby, isn't she? Yes, yes she is. But it's about how she steals that baby. So Taylor comes up with this plan, and first she chooses someone who's super pregnant, and it ends up being an acquaintance of hers, this woman, Reagan. Then she goes over to Reagan's house one morning to like meet up with her, and Reagan invites her in, and they're, you know, probably chatting or whatever, and suddenly, pow, Taylor hits Reagan over the head with a hammer, and Reagan falls to the floor, and Taylor hits her again and again and again, and there Reagan is, on the ground, in pain, and that is when Taylor takes out a scalpel and she uses it to unalive Reagan. And then she surgically removes Reagan's baby from Reagan's belly. So now Taylor has what she needs, a baby. So she gets in her car with the baby and she starts to drive toward a hospital because she plans to register this baby as her own. So she's speeding down the highway, driving like a maniac, trying to get to this hospital, and that's when a state trooper sees her and he pulls her over. And she tells him like, I just gave birth in the car, and to take her to the hospital. So they rush her to the hospital, and sadly, the baby, it doesn't survive. And while at the hospital, the staff, they examine Taylor. They do blood work, they check her hormone levels, they even do a vaginal exam. And pretty quickly, they start to realize Taylor's story? It isn't adding up. She's showing no signs of birth or pregnancy. Plus, remember, she had a hysterectomy years ago, so she doesn't even have a uterus. But meanwhile, on the other side of town, Reagan's mother had come over to Reagan's house. And there, she finds Reagan on the floor, unalived. And of course, the baby's missing. So she calls 911, and police, they quickly put two and two together. And they realize exactly whose baby it was that Taylor had stolen. So they arrest Taylor, here's her mugshot, and they charge her with murder and kidnapping. She goes to trial, and she's found guilty, and she's sentenced not to life, but to death. That's a crazy story. Shout out to Texas.